and I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free, and I won't forget the men who died, whoops, who gave that right to me, and I'd gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Cause there ain't no doubt. I love this land, 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 land. God, the dog is worried. God bless the USA. I'm not proud or tired. Welcome to tonight's episode of the Mosaic Arc. And uh, come on, sing with me. And, and I'm proud to be proud, 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 proud. Okay, I'm sorry. I... <laughs> you can sing it. Here, maybe she can sing it with you. I'm proud to be an American. There you go. <laughs> well, at least I it know all. I'm free. And I won't forget the men. I can't do it. I, it's like I, I really need singing lessons. So I can be proud to be an American, right? Yes, I, I am on, very proud on. to be go, an American. Go, go, go for I, the song. I will not slaughter that song. <laughs> I actually do like that song. Well, you know what happened to me four years ago? No, was it four years? Yes, it was four years ago. What, you know, what a thought. Okay, so one, Trump always used that in his in his campaign thingies, righty? something like that well they use it in, they use it in every republican convention since the 80s i think yes you know, well greenwood I, but i you know i've learned all sorts of terrible things about this song i'm gonna break your heart hmm. yeah doubt it but go oh, on well okay so what, some of it was the the it, it it's open in the video it opens with if all if, if tomorrow all the things were gone i work for all my life it's it's kind it was something about the farmers it was yeah. it was the 80s so a lot of farmers were were going bankrupt and they were losing their land yeah. and uh it had something to, i think it i've got to reach back into my memory when this happened when i was in college i think so i think it had something to do with the savings and loans um uh crashing that makes sense and i think but i don't have all the details on that but uh a lot of farmers overextended themselves and he made this song saying well yep uh lost the farm but i I, I still don't hate my country. Okay, that's that's a nice sentiment. It, it is it, the song is a nice sentiment. It's been overplayed, mm. and, and unfortunately, is mockable because of that. But yeah, it had to do. I wasn't with, mocking. Uh, I just can't sing. <laughs> I'm not, no, not no, not you. I mean, you know the the idea that you know that only only a bunch of you know redneck farmers driving pickup trucks would ever be proud to be an American, which I just, I just think is, is or should be nonsense. I think it probably is nonsense. Yeah. I think you know, the only uh, voices that get heard in, in the very tightly controlled uh, media market are, are you know, New York intellectual types or, you know, the Ivy League intellectual types who, who sneer at uh, flyover country, you know. So this is, this is kind of a flyover country anthem. Well, and, I loved uh, it when I, when, so I, I, the thing is somehow I grew up not hearing it. How? I don't know. Um, well, it didn't come out until 1986, I think. Okay. Well, so that could explain it. Cause I went over to England yeah. for graduate school in, in 1986. 
and mm -hmm. one I was kind of I was I was sort of weirdly clueless about everything when I graduated from college and then I was in England for a couple of years and then in New York and I do think I kind of it's like I was in college and everything in Houston which had you know like the NASA pride element and I grew up as we've talked about lots of times you know in the southwest which has lots of federal land and everything so you know i'd always had that this strong feeling of you know what it is to be to be american but it exactly at the time when this this song came out i was around people who found it risible for sure and and, yeah, I, don't, and well, I don't think i yeah. i heard it plain um so i was i was quite struck by it when i heard it uh, four years ago, right? This is like, we're, we're back in, we're in the election cycle now. We're about to have, you know, 4th yeah. of July and everything. And they used it in the great, the rally or 4th or of July celebration that President Trump had at Mount Rushmore oh, that, yeah, that year. That makes sense. And one of our friends, bless his heart, <clears throat> who is, um, the, please, please pray for Dexter. Um, uh it has gotten up against some of our, our our legal requirements over firearms right now was mocking yeah. it because he said it wasn't true country right that it was actually like corporate like greenwood it, it, yeah i agree with yeah. that i agree with that it's still a good song though i mean it, it's still a good sentiment you know for, but for it being like used constantly in republican conventions i have nothing against republicans i just think it when, when that when that happens it, it becomes that song, that kind of anthem-like song, becomes you know, trite. Mm. Is that the right word? No. Um, well, this is. I mean, I, this is. Yeah. This is like. So last week we were talking about the problem of you know the satanic, miltonic, rebel valorization that we have in our culture, and the the converse of that. For those of you who haven't watched that previous episode, um, the converse of that in the monastic tradition of service to Christ. Um, mm -hmm. I mean the, you, I mean one of the things in in the um in the in the in the, the refrain is that you know I won't forget the men who died who gave that right to me right that there's the that yeah. there's a military, um, element in the pride which sure. I certainly have as part of my you know family tradition because my dad was you know served in Thailand during the Vietnam War my grandfathers both served. In different capacities in world war ii and my dad's father was a you know career um air force officer so mm. and, you know and therefore we have you know we have the, that southern military tradition feeling and it's like i grew up like knowing that you were supposed to be proud of america and mm -hmm. it was you know i i, I feel sad because four years ago i heard it our friend was mocking it as a song not i think as the mm -hmm. sentiment but as the song and there was something that happened to me when i was i i was i this, so i'm back on leave again this year this happens every four years and weirdly enough my leave cycle always coincides because they happen every four years with the election so it's huh. summers and i think that's when i met you was about four years ago yeah so, yeah yeah i mean i this is when i started um the telegram chat and mm -hmm. we were writing the poetry and everything and I also I'm looking forward to building a lot of those little Ankerstein buildings again because I get to you know all right th think think deep thoughts read too many books and 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 build it's, right? it's Ankerstein season it's Ankerstein season again it's Ankerstein season uh, yeah in DCR because I had all those little buildings right which was like our our yeah. the the you know, like we imagine ourselves in this cloister or this castle or this water tower or you know this factory they're these great like early 20th century German toys um, yeah they were great. Great toy makers and clock makers, yeah. and just all kinds of gadgets going way back, hundreds of years. Well, and now I'm reading. Okay, there. so we did, guys. You got to keep up with us because we're giving you're going to be throwing lots of homework at you over the summer because I'm on leave, which means I'm reading all these new things. <laughs> and <laughs> and so should you. <laughs> and so should you. And in our newsletter, which you can um, find the link for in the description, I've added it to our YouTube description. So go to the newsletter, and we put some reading up. Casey's got. She's going to read Tacitus and Dante because she's got the classics. And I was suggesting reading a cookbook and a novel and a novel that's kind of in the background of Draco Chemicus. And what else was there? Oh, yes. A book on the Franciscans and Mary. I've got we've got to do a whole episode on Mary again. We haven't done a Mary episode in a while. I'm, that will be fun. I'm there. Yeah, well, can we do that? But I love her. <laughs> but thinking about Germany, I'm reading a book by David Blackburn on Germany and the world and the sort of pride level 
of where we are in this is very interesting because a lot of this we were mm. talking last week about um the, the american sense of pride a lot of the you know german sense of pride it's it's post 1871 and the unification of of germany and I... their imperial ambitions and so these Ankerstein toys sort of come out of that moment of like pride in german craftsmanship and 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 um intellectual life and um th that they finally Isn't have a that country interesting. <laughs> because they yeah. hadn't had one when everybody else was building up their pride right so well, yeah, I, I suppose. I mean, Italy was going through the same thing in the same decades, wasn't yes. it, in the 19th century? Yes, very much so. And um, I wonder how much of that was inspired by 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 the American Revolution or the French Revolution. Well, thanks to this book I'm reading, I can say. <laughs> Yay! That um, the Germans actually your brain. <laughs> so this no, this is interesting because I've got. I was saying I have the military tradition on my 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 both my mom's and dad's side, but we also have the German mm -hmm. part of our tradition on both sides. And I'm now sort of fascinated about how all of these streams are coming together of like whose pride is what, because of course in the 20th century, they're gonna shatter apart. And then yeah. you end up with us being mocked for being proud of having a country because right. of problematic things that our country has done as, it, as its imperial self, but we're still proud of being America. And it's like, where are we gonna go with this? I'm gonna like get busy with the doll. <laughs> well, yeah, you, 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 you don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. I think it's pretty simple, right? Germans should be proud to be German. There's a lot to be, lot to be proud of. You know, same, same with the Italians and same with the Americans. A lot of crappy things in all of our histories too, but uh, it's, it's, it's still a virtue. It's Pride Month, right? Well, we're still wrestling with this, right? Country. So we're, you know, yeah. it's like we, we left everyone kind of hanging with the, you know, oh, you know, the American tradition is all based on Satan. <laughs> that's it's so dumb <laughs> well but, but we're you and i are catholic i just say yeah you, you grew you converted right or you grew up uh no actually you grew up I, catholic. I grew up in a i grew up in a kind of marginally catholic okay. typical american catholic family and, and had kind of a radical re reversion conversion okay. in my late 20s yeah. so that's that's where i am there so um i i, I stand out in my family <laughs> for that would be more more pious than than well i mean well i mean i wouldn't use the word pious um I, i'd use the word intractable intractable <laughs> proud hey are you a yeah, proud I, catholic <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah I, i'm not apologetic yeah about it in, in any way right so it's like don't don't ask me an opinion if you don't really want to hear it <laughs> well, so all of these things track, I mean, so in the, the Germany in the World book is very interesting because it's talking about, um, one, that Germans were kind of everywhere in a lot of the, uh, it started in the 16th century with, uh, in the time that our story, our Dracochemicus research starts with the empires mm -hmm. and the, you know, the, the spread yeah, the of European of them, yeah. contact with, with the rest of the world and the desire for commodities and gold and, and things like that. And the Germans they don't have um, a sea empire like the others, and they only have the empire that they have of colonies in the late 19th century. It's very brief. Everybody else gets to have an empire for, you know, centuries, the Dutch and the English. And... Where are the Germans' colonies? I didn't realize they had any. It's only in the late 19th century, technically, and it's like in the Pacific Islands and in Africa. Really? Yeah. Oh, I had, no, I had no idea. I guess that explains the African Queen, though. It's a great movie. <laughs> oh well, that would make sense. Yes, because yeah. the, that's the Congo, right? They're going up the Congo, right? And right. that is okay. I haven't seen that movie in a bit, but is that not in the context of First World War? Oh. And the Germans were there. The Germans, but were, they might have but been everybody was there because Prince Congo. Leopold right. had everybody come to the Congo for his international free trade thing. Ah, yeah. oh, that's fascinating. Oh, that tracks with what we're writing. <laughs> We got, really we got so much this is this is great it's like so what we're what we're showing you guys right now is like this the, the deep level of footnotes and, and that's what i'm doing for for my in my head right now i'm writing i'm doing footnotes for an article that i spent last year writing and i'm doing reading this is franciscan stuff i'm doing reading for a couple new articles that i have to be working on that overlap some with that and the the sort of need to figure out absolutely every little link and and, and connection and stuff is 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 cool but with germans um they are 
um, affected by the French Revolution quite directly in, in various ways. Some of it because the young men, a lot of young men and some young women are very taken by the revolutionary um, rhetoric and they go to Paris and hang mm. out there and some of them get their heads chopped off and some of them, you know, champion in the French cause. But then when Napoleon conquers Europe, the German lands are massively reorganized. Uh, the, 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 oh. that, that decade of Napoleonic conquest completely rewrites the map of, of, of the German lands, gets rid of the Holy Roman Empire, and then sets them up to have this problem of what are we, which they... Have, have, they, have they had any room to breathe in the past 250 years? It sounds like it's constantly being reorganized. Well, they had, they, they, I mean, they suffered the most in the 30 years war, obviously 1618 to 1648. And you mm. say that the new, the new world order that we are now losing came into being in 1648 with Westphalia and the treaty of Westphalia and the treaties of nations or something like that. But yeah, they don't have a nation to mm. be treated with in the, the same terms until 1871 when Bismarck consolidates it's bigger than what Germany is now because Prussia includes parts of Poland. But anyway, <laughs> um, right. they and parts of France too, right? The Rhineland and, and the Alsace. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I should have, I should have, I should have had maps to our our. Um, are you <laughs> proud yet? Are you all proud of how much <laughs> how much map you can remember off the top of your head as I'm talking? Get your maps out. Um, so the Germ so one they're they're paying attention to the French Revolution um in the in the the late 18th century and they're deeply affected by the napoleonic conquest in the early 19th century and then they have several some decades of lot, massive political battles among themselves because there's so there's still enough different little entities that nation to them early on can mean like bavaria right it's like right which which locality so i this is the one of the fun things i learned the deutschland über alles was meant to mm -hmm. be, it would be like saying the United States over Texas, right? Um, it was trying to say there should be a Germany that is all of these different regions. It wasn't Deutschland over all other nations like France and Spain and stuff. So, it was just... So maybe it might help me. To, what does Uber Alice mean? I've heard that phrase before, but I don't know what it means. Um, overall, right? Oh, okay. And so all right. so now people hear it. It's like, so we're the proud to be an American problem, right? It's like, what are we now? Are we proud? That, are we, what are we proud of? Right? Are you? Oh, so are you? You know, you could. Are you proud of what the United States is doing in X, Y, or Z? You know, world conflict, and you're like, ah, oh. yeah. Which is what happened to me when in the 1980s I went to England and was surrounded by socialists, right? And they're well, like, well, sure. Well, but, but but then again, what else would they know? Because they don't live in America. They're only going to have experiences of it externally to to the actual landmass of the country. Right. What our country is doing outside of it, which is you know, staying way longer than we need to after the Second World War, right? I mean, at, at, at minimum, we sh we should have NATO should have ceased to exist in 1991. So I can understand, you know, the frustration there right. because the Americans what what the Europeans don't understand is most Americans share their frustration. And say, what the hell are we doing there? You know, it's it's, it's a big waste of money and manpower and time, and you know, we we've, we've got other things to be fixing here you know we don't need to be over anywhere anywhere else right now so but that's that's something that's been said in a, you know in all kinds of uh, american circles of all, all all kinds of classes for decades everybody says the same thing so i can understand why that's all you would hear you hear both here right so obviously <laughs> you know there's there's pe people are proud of things um in their country's history here, and they're not so proud of things in their country's history here and there. Right. You know, they're being outside of it. But yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 I don't get into those fights with people in Europe. Uh, Aren't you a proud American? Come on, you said you were a proud Catholic. And you'll pick fights with the people I, for that. I am, but the, <laughs> but the thing is, it's, it's like I, I could beat my head against a wall too because people don't know what the hell. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. They, they don't. And I used to get angry about, it, but now I'm just like, mm, yeah, whatever, okay. You know, <laughs> I'll say, yeah, I'll bring it up at the next meeting. You know, I'll say something sarcastic like that. <laughs> Somebody makes a comment because they, yeah, that I don't, I, as I get older, I have less tolerance for people who, who are, who are uh, comfortable in their ignorance. 
So you so there. This is why you and I get along. <laughs> <laughs> but you need to do more reading, of course. Um, yeah. I mean, I the, the thing is, I spend most of my time. Uh, we we have talked about this too, because uh, I remember making the gesture. Right? It's like you know this much, and then you and then the, as it expands, right. you get more ignorant because. <laughs> the, the the surface right. of everything that you don't know is bigger yeah um yeah you just you just cracked the surface right yes the first membrane of the surface <laughs> it's it's like so i say so milo is playing the the flat earth advocate on x right now and he, he put one of those maps up of the, the the ice walls go out right and so there's yet more world and it's like that's that's just my life right reading more history but yeah. what's interesting is the history is always still only our world. And so your feeling of, oh, I finally contained it all in my head and I know the story. And it's like, no, there's another piece that you didn't have. And uh -huh. a lot of it's been, interestingly, this German piece and this book I'm reading came out in 2023. So it's, it's new very, in the scholarship yeah. to suddenly go, wait a minute. Okay, so Germany doesn't have an empire in the same fashion as the other big European powers do until the late 19th century, which it rapidly loses in the, in the first world war. Um, yeah. I, it, you know, it has, it has the same kind of challenges. So, okay. So I've, I've closed parentheses or catch thread. Um, the Germans, they have some relationship with the French revolution and a lot of what happens in 1830 and then in 1848, the revolutions in France, in those years and they, their ripple effects across the continent. There's there's revolutions everywhere in 1848. All of these different smaller entities, particularly in the German, central German lands, have governmental changes and stuff, right? England doesn't have a, a revolution. They have parliament at that point. And I think Spain doesn't have one at that point either. But everybody else mm -hmm. has revolutions in 1848. And that, the 48ers, a lot of those who ended up on the wrong political side particularly from the German lands, immigrate to the United States. Hmm. <laughs> so they come over and, and a lot of the ones that have to leave are like labor union um, leaders and a lot of news, so this a lot of newspapers. The Germans end up founding lots and lots of German language newspapers in the United States mm -hmm. in the 19th century. Right. There used to be a lot of them up, up, up through 19... 17, 19, 1920. Funny that. It, it, yeah. <laughs> right. What happened then? I, I'm not to that part of the book yet. I don't yeah. know. Um, and so. Ch Ch Chicago had the largest German, German uh, American parade and um, uh, in, in festival in the country. And it ended until they brought it back in the 1980s. It ended in the 1920s. And, uh, and they didn't bring it back until the 1980s. That's how long these people felt uncomfortable expressing their ethnic pride, which is shameful on our part, the part of the rest of the country for making them feel like that. I, I have my great grandmother refused to say she had any German blood in her whatsoever. She says, no, no, it's Dutch. <laughs> we said, yes, nanny, we know Dutch means Deutsch, it's German. No, 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 it's, it's Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends on whether, you know, how much you know about the East India Company, whether she wants to claim that. Uh, uh, yeah, well, no, no, she didn't know anything. So God bless her. <laughs> Rest her soul. This is the more we learn for Draco Alchemicus, the world, you know, yeah. oh my gosh. The, the, yes, it starts under the tree. We told you guys that there's no safe space in history that says we were the good guys. So just get get a grip and get used to it. Uh, right. The, the, um, two things that you said. One, I just remembered that one of the things in the book I'm reading about, he's talking about novels that Germans are writing in the late 19th century because they're all looking to the United States thinking, one, that a bunch of their family have moved over. The telegraph mm -hmm. and the steamships make it possible to get news back and forth more quickly. Yes. And so they do have a lot of fantasies about like settling in the West. And some there is there are a few communities that try it in Texas and like go, I mean, there's one south of Austin that everyone mentions. Oh yeah, Germans in, you know, Fredericksburg, south of Austin. But they 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 mainly settled in like the Ohio River Valley, the Midwest. What you said about Chicago, Chicago was apparently um, one, more Germans come than anybody else. It's like a third of the new population by 1900 is Germans. And wow. they, the, Chicago is one of the biggest German cities in the world in 1900 mm -hmm. because so many of them had moved directly here. Mm -hmm. um, 
and and some of the not one of the novels there was a, one of the novels that i was just reading about i haven't read the novel yet it was called river pirates of the mississippi <laughs> it's a great title <laughs> i like it <laughs> You know, the German fantasy about the West. So never mind, you know, the 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 nineteen fifties movies of the Wild West. The Germans were already I think, there. And I think they, in Germany today, I think they still have uh, co communities that get together. It's like Ren Fair, but it's for American West, the American West. Some people would dress for cowboys and Indians for like a week or two. They do. They do. <laughs> I I had German friends who, you know, had some of these novels and they say, Yeah, we have these and they're they're not translated into English. These German German language novels about the American West, because it's wow, like huge in their imagination. So proud yeah. to be an, like I say, proud to be an American one. A lot of that flyover country is populated by Germans and both mm -hmm. Protestants and Catholics, right? Detroit, mm -hmm. one of the, the church I mentioned Milo, so I'll do it again. Because I guess he's on X. I guess I can t say his name out loud again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you say it three times, he'll appear. <laughs> that would be terrible. Um, uh, the, we, we had his confirmation at, in Detroit at the the church where the Institute for Christ the King had had been meeting, and it was one mm -hmm. of these. It's one of these like beautiful Gothic style German mm, churches. Beautiful. All of the all of the inscriptions mm -hmm. and everything on the statues and everything are in German. Lovely. Yeah. So flyover well, country is both story. German and, and <laughs> River Pirates of the Mississippi. Yep. Yeah. Um, and it's German and French and Irish. Uh, uh, well, yes. And English. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The Scots, um, they, they think they more stayed in Appalachia, didn't they? <laughs> there's there, a but... lot of Scots that are, are cowboys in the West, too. So mm. there's and, and there's there's I mean, the Bostonians are speculating a lot in the American West. American, we, we, uh, we need to do some episodes like properly on a Western history rather than me just sort of waving my hands at, at Santa Fe. Um, <laughs> that, okay, so even, so th th I love how the stream has taken us in places I didn't plan, but there you go. Thinking about what it means to be proud to be an American. What does that mean, right? And 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 this yeah. is the the pride language. I was, I was showing you this. I was playing with Google Ingram um, and looking at proud American, proud English, proud German, proud. Um, mm -hmm. I tried a few others like proud um, Russian, but the ones that stuck out were proud Christian, oddly, around the time of the the um, French Revolution, like at the end of the 19th century, uh, 18th century, which I found strange, right? That is was, strange. That, was, very... that, that was like, and you asked like in what, mean what mo me mode do they use that is that a good thing or a bad thing i don't know i didn't I right didn't, i didn't take the then a huge you know the whole 19th century arced over by proud english <laughs> yeah that's what not a surprise surprising. right and then yeah this peak of proud american basically the first world war right yes and a peak of proud german around the second world war and then basically nobody like nobody wins in the 20th century. <laughs> yep, everybody everybody goes everybody goes down. Nobody, nobody wants to <laughs> use downhill. that language anymore after World War II. Yeah. Yeah, could be trauma on I mean, the part of everybody really. I mean, if Americans left World War II and it was one war after another, it was you know, it was Korea and it was Vietnam and Laos and Cambodia and you know, Afghanistan, it's just never ending. And yeah, it's so the, the pride's there, but because they wrap it up so much in war, people are shunning the thought of it. That's my opinion. They're, they're shunning that language mm -hmm. because it's been co-opted um, to, to, to beat a war drum. It was it, it, unfortunate. It, okay, so this this was my problem. So one, to a certain extent, it's like Greenwood. I mean, this I, I gladly stand up. You know, I won't forget the man who died who gave that right to me, right? And I mean, he's doing this in the 80s, so it's I mean, the, say the Revolutionary War. Oh, fun fact, right, about the 18th century, that the Germans are mercenaries for everybody. <laughs> so those, okay. those Hessians <laughs> that famously fought, I mean, there's, okay, so some of the Germans that, that are around in the, in the 18th century, they are mercenaries, soldiers being hired by, oh, both the French and the Germ and the British, right? So like in mm -hmm. some of the wars, you end up with, German forces fighting each other <laughs> on both sides. Um, 
well, something is, like a third true. of the quote British forces fighting the Americans in the Revolutionary War were were Hessians. They were Germans. Yeah, I did know that. Yeah, yeah, they show up in That's movies who, every so often as bad guys. Yeah, that was. Uh, in, in fact, they were mostly um, quartered in Pennsylvania, weren't they? Or they tried to. Like that was when Washington's famous crossing of the Delaware was, it was it, to, to to strike on Christmas Eve. That was against Hessians. Oh. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the Germans are fighting us, but then they're also marrying people and sticking around. So marrying the ladies and and <laughs> staying here. So there's German mixed in that way. Yeah. Yeah. Because there were a lot of Germans living in Pennsylvania at the time already. That they they started their migrations in the 1600s. The first German migrations came. Then okay. the pious Germans that the Quakers called them. The Moravians. Yeah. The Pietists. Yeah. Yeah, I, this, all of this is coming from this book. The Moravians are, the, apparently the Wesley and the Wesley brothers are very influenced by them. And so they go back home and found Methodism. <laughs> so Interesting. I, you know, Methodism is a, is a response to the Anglican church, but apparently they were right. directly influenced by these Moravians and in fact translated some of their hymns. So. Interesting. Yeah. I did not know that about them. Huh. Yeah. Wesley's, Wesley's very big in the South. There's, there are statues of him, plaques all over the place. He preached a lot of places, but apparently, is, so there. So this is this is the 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 hidden Germanness of of a lot of the stories. It's like they're in they're they 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 were um often like scientists and explorers in a lot of the. I mean, they're famous ones like Linnaeus or Humboldt, who do a lot of the mm -hmm. collecting expeditions around the world. Um, which is how we end up with the night early 19th century idea of Germans as thinkers and scientists and philosophers. That, oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is in the, this is the, this was the Hollywood trope for a long time. Wasn't it? It was like this, the German scientist with this thick accent. It wasn't just because of Einstein. No, it was, it was because of the <laughs> yeah. 19th century German universities and seminars, which is what the university of Chicago was explicitly modeled on because our first president, William Rainey Harper goes to Germany and studies, you know, how the, the classes and, and structure of the universities work in such in Germany, and then comes back and tries to set ours up similarly, although it's so, different. Yeah. This is interesting because I'm, rem I'm remembering uh, Steuben, right? Who he had the name, had the, 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 the prefix Vaughn added to it by Benjamin Franklin because he wanted the Americans to think he was an aristocrat. <laughs> right? He wasn't, but he knew military strategy very well. Mm. And so he hired him to come over from Germany and teach the American troops. And so he, that's, that was the birth of our military was German. <laughs> okay. So we are now, we have now thoroughly complicated in only one direction, <laughs> American, right? It's like, is there all these one, it's like the, 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 you know, they're all these German Americans that don't admit it. Thanks to the, you know, the, well, I guess, you know, I, this is what's funny. It's like the Hessians were fighting the American revolutionary troops. And yet some of the American revolutionary troops were themselves German. And then in the, mm -hmm. the, and then there's a lot of the migration, you know, 5 million, 5.5 million Germans come over apparently in the later 19th century. So a huge migration to the United States. Um, and then we end up in a in the United States ends up in, in at war with Germany in the First and Second World War, which means Germans are fighting Germans again. Oh, it's a Thirty Years' War over and over again. Right. <laughs> and they, they just did, like keep they, repeating people, the war. Stop it. These people did get around for somebody who didn't have major colonies anywhere. <laughs> It just went everywhere. But the irony, it's like the the Thirty Years' War is Germans fighting Germans and Swedes and everything like that. And then the First and Second World Wars are the Germans fighting the Germans, but they're calling themselves Americans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that 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 caused a lot. That caused big problems for for the German Americans too. Yeah. Just that long lasting, decades long lasting problems, as I just pointed out. So yeah, how does an American say, "I'm proud to be an American," but your ethnic background is something different? I think Box likes to say a lot, well, you have to be English Puritan. It's like, okay, well, got that in my background. It's a less than 10% of my DNA. <laughs> so does it mean anything, really? I mean, my part of my family's been here for a very long time. Right. It's been it's been mixed with it's been mixed with uh, a, a lot of different, you know, ethnic groups. Well, not a lot, a few, a handful, you know. But uh, in, English is way far down on the list. It's in there as it is with most Americans right. up until about 20 years ago. 
you know, it was the number one, I think 30 or 40 years ago of the census, it was the, the number one ethnic group um, people listed on the census. Um, followed said, by they said think, English. English, right. And the thing is, they didn't disappear. People just aren't listing it anymore, right? So well, it's they may a, it's not know, straight, a, right? They don't. Well, they may not. Well, I, I can't imagine that that family lore would disappear in 40 years. Um, but uh, maybe it does. I'm, I, maybe I'm just weird and kind of pay attention to that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, the, the ethnic makeup of the United States is changing uh, in the very dishonest ways on Congress's part, but that's another story. Um, but, but people have for a long time been able to balance being, I'm, I'm this ethnic group, but I'm an American. I'm an American first, right? And I think that's hard for... I think it's hard for people who come from ethnically cohesive uh, nations to wrap their heads around that. And I can understand why, because it's novel in human history. It's happened a couple of times. Maybe it happened in Rome. Uh, maybe it happened, maybe it happened, uh, you know, during the Roman empire in certain, in certain spots and maybe North Africa, but it doesn't happen that often. <laughs> so. Actually, no. I mean, this is, it happens all the time. This, this is this is to, 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 to this quickly the mixing this quickly to this extent was exists in our country oh you mean with the the migration from the south right now or the, with the history of the United States generally well the history of the history of the United States generally so 200 going coming on 250 years um, um, okay well let's start with English okay um, the Roman Britons are there in the fifth century and we never know mm -hmm. never mind we don't we don't you know it's like the romans would have been mixed in with other people because things like constantine is apparently has a roman a, a british mother and he's the emperor oh, right? i didn't know that um mm -hmm. and then so the the whatever the british the, the british romans are they those those people are mixed up a lot because the legions are move around yes right? they they, they, they yeah. station people in in lots of different parts of the empire and yeah so the legions move around so those populations got mixed okay so just start with roman britain in that one the anglo-saxons yeah. show up in various waves in the sixth seventh century mm -hmm. um they then start getting in, conquered by the danes in the ninth century the, da oh, the danes yeah, come in it, yeah. several waves with different groups then the Normans <laughs> conquered the Danes. Isn't that funny? So that happened in England, right? Didn't happen in reverse. You know, England didn't start invading Denmark and setting up colonies. But they, this happens to England over and over again over a matter of centuries. Yes, like and all of they, early Middle East, all right. of early, you know, Anglo-Saxon England is another but, wave of Danes. Right. But then they, <laughs> centuries later, found, you know, the American colonies. <laughs> and the same thing happens. That is really interesting. And then, and then maybe that's our ethnic heritage. Our, well, okay, it's our ethnic mixed. heritage is, uh, as English is, you know, to be sea people who conquer, right? It's like which which ethnic group are you going to identify with? The Roman Britons who were conquered, you know, they live in Wales now, or the Anglo Saxons who were the conquerors, yeah. or the Danes who conquered them, or the Normans who conquered them, and then the Normans, the 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 nobility spend some time trying to keep hold parts of France, which isn't France yet, like Aquitaine and Gascony, and mm -hmm. then in the Hundred Years' War, it's the English going over to France several times and trying to hold on to Burgundy and things like that. And then when they finish doing that, they uh were by the fifteenth century. Now we're, we've mixed up. The thing is, there's the the fantasy of the nineteenth century, and this is why the the like okay, proud to be an American, proud to be German what we were talking about to begin with is there's no such thing as Germany right, until, that's, the, that's until a, 1871. <laughs> there is like, you know, I can't, I can't even name I'm all proud of to them. Be a Bavarian, I'm, I'm proud right? to be a Bavarian, proud to be a Hessian, proud to be a Prussian, proud yeah. to be a, you know, Liechtensteinian, proud to be, yeah. uh, you know, a, a citizen of the Imperial city of Mainz or whatever. Right. It's like, there's so many different, when Napoleon comes along, he, like standardizes a lot and throws out yeah. all sorts of little tiny places, you know, it's, but it's there's strange. still like 30 different states. So the Germans, yeah. the Germans in the mid 19th century, actually, they, in 1848, they have a bunch of printings of the American constitution because they're very interested in the idea of a federation. They see the, this is 1848. Mm -hmm. So it's before our civil war. 
A lot of Germans yeah. apparently came over and fought on the Union side in the Civil War. Oh my gosh, it's still part of the story. Um, the wait a minute, they came over specifically to fight uh -huh. for the Union. Uh -huh. Why? That is really because they weird. were fighting for the Federation. They saw it as fighting for the the, the Union of the 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 states. But what? But what did it have to do with them? <laughs> what are you? Asking? these questions. <laughs> this question. I mean, that's an odd thing to do. I'm going to go fight. I mean, occasionally that's you see some, some young man say, I'm going to go fight over there in Ukraine because there's fighting going on and I think it's just, so I'm going to go do that. Yep. Or, you know, other conflicts, certain same things happen, but I've never heard of that happening. I need to fight to make sure their federation stays together. Why? Why do you care? <laughs> I would I'm ask them if I had to be <laughs> Um, so, no, so in 1848, they're very interested in the American Constitution because they see it as a potential model for what they need to do, which is figure out some way they can exist as Germany, which in 1848, they still don't. And and a lot of the, the 48ers that end up coming to the United States, they get, like, so Vox's post, no, Nietzsche doesn't come into this, Wagner does. Wagner um, fights on one side or the other or something, right? And, and because each of these political entities are fairly small a lot of the 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 um revolutionaries in 1848 they just flee across the border to another small state they don't necessarily all come to the united states so th they don't know how to be germany there is no such thing oh. in 1848 or 1848 1860 it, it just everybody needs to remember 1848 it's the same year the communist manifesto yeah. was published that's what i was just gonna say <laughs> That's why it's sticking in my head. Yep. It's like, okay, these. so were these communists coming over here? Did communism mean something different in 1848? Did it just mean a, a unification of, of states under a federal government? No, no, that's different. Um, the communists okay. the communists do see themselves as international workers all along. Um, but mm. but they do what the Germans who come over here do bring us a lot of socialism. I mean, labor movement stuff. They're, they're yeah. very active in creating oh they must have been super popular here they were well i mean some of them not, some not of the, amongst the robber bear some of them are involved in the hay, <laughs> the the haymarket riot in chicago famously oh. but there's a lot of them yeah. again i was just reading about this a lot of them involved in other labor movements mm -hmm. yeah but they they were attracted so the people who were labor you know unionists were attracted to the union of the united states well, it's, it's still not something's missing from this. Well, one, it's the complexity of like which groups are which, right? And and Blackburn yeah. tries to talk through all of that, saying, you know, there's there's city Germans, there's country Germans, there's so there's a lot, you know, mm -hmm. a good number that come over here to farm, but then others come over to work in factories. So and just as now saying what's an American, right? Are we the city people or are we the country people? Are we the farmers, like in the in the song, or are we the you know urbanites never mind mm -hmm. coast right it's like we've we have in on mosaic art talked through some of these complexities but like it's interesting just adding this one like new element of the the germans in the mix makes it even more well okay so i'm wondering regionally rich i've known yeah i've known lots of germans in my life um because they they, they move here a lot mm -hmm. you know? so i do i do meet a lot of them i never thought once to ask them because I wasn't really into the minutia of you know particular movements like this, like as we've been plotting, as we write, right. we, we we delve into this a lot. How many people in Germany today consider themselves German first, and whatever their region they come from second, or vice versa, or does it even come up? Because I know in Italy, which was created around the same time Germany was created, people are still very attached to their specific regions they even have separate languages i'm told right you know you know i'm not italian i'm sicilian you know <laughs> i'm venetian you know, or I'm, I'm tuscan you know they're very very loyal to to their homes their families their their families um yeah, ancestral home right so i wonder if the same thing happens in germany because i've never heard anybody talk like i've never heard any when germans talk like that that might just be personality they're they, they're not quite as you know emotional and open as, as the Italians are, but uh, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. Hmm. Well, so sometimes they they may or may not say because they expect American. Um, sorry, Americans don't know. So what's the difference, right? It's like 
um, my husband is English, but you know, people say, Oh, you know, where are you from? He's like London. Cause like, he doesn't want to have the conversation to explain, <laughs> <laughs> you know, where I, he grew up. Right. So they just say London. I, I yeah, um, I, I, yeah, but, I have even more reason than him to do that. But <laughs> right. And that, um, there are, you know, I, we have some German friends and, and, um, she is from Franconia, right? And we'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. So I, it may, it, it, that there, there are two different things there, right? They may just assume that Americans don't know the regional differences. So why, why bother, right? It's, oh, like telling somebody a state, right? Right. right. You know, it's like if I, if, if I, if I yeah. say I'm from the United States, you know, how much detail do you want? Right. <laughs> yes. Um, and, uh, the, but the thing is, I think people in the United States, Prior to, I think, World War II, prior to, uh, you know, something with the New Deal stuff, which is all very federal project stuff, people used mm -hmm. to much more identify with their states here, even after they the did. Civil War. Yes, they did. Even, even I would say even after, after the Second World War, yeah. it really until the 1960s when people started moving a lot, mm -hmm. you know, uh, out of their regions, right. you know. That's when you ask when you ask somebody where they're from, it can mean um, where do you live, where did you grow up, where were you born, where's your family from, right? It's got a couple of different meanings there, and it, I think, like you say, it used to be a lot easier to say, oh, I'm from this state or this town because my my family's been there for like out of twenty generations or whatever. Right. You know that used to be very common, and it's not anymore, and it hasn't been for over fifty years. Yeah, so it's really, I mean, it's so much our generation, right? Because I'd say yeah. I was born, I was born in St. Louis, and I've since, you know, only in like the last few years learned that, okay, so my dad's family was from nearby in St. Louis, and oh, right, there were Germans in St. Louis, right? They were some of those. Oh, um, yeah, a lot, of the, a lot of Germans there. But I, I never understood that. I thought I was born in St. Louis because my parents were in school there, because that they were yeah. in school there, but they were in school there, I think, because that was where my dad's family was, but they were in medical school. So who knows where they, you know, they, they could have gone anywhere. But then we moved mm -hmm. from St. Louis to Albuquerque because my dad's um, brother-in-law was working at the labs and he wanted to be near his sister because they were very close. But he, we, we, we went to Albuquerque and that was one of these, like, strange internal migrations that I didn't realize how significant it was that there were no whites, mm -hmm. there were no Anglos in Albuquerque oh. when we moved there. It was like one of the- That's a culture shock. Well, I was a baby, so what did I know? So oh, I just- Well, for your parents, maybe. <laughs> my mom was from North Texas, right? Which was another, you know, mm -hmm. border region, as it were, of settlement. But, you know, realizing that you know, from the mid sixties, all of these movements changed. I mean, a lot of movement to the Southwest by the the white population, um, mm -hmm. All of the stuff that we're experiencing now with like who belongs in the Southwest on across which border, right? The pe A lot yeah. of the people going to and from the border in North Mexico, the Mexicans down South consider them American already because they're, they have behaviors that are more like the people in Arizona and New Mexico, because guess what? They were there for centuries. <laughs> right. I mean, there was just a lot of, there was a lot of cultural and agricultural exchange. Always. I mean, it was the same. It's the same thing on the northern border, you know, with the French Canadians. Mm -hmm. They would cross the border all the time. And the French Canadians or, or, or the Mohawk or the other tribes up Precisely. there. It's it's said, you know, um, when they started getting stricter with the borders in the mid-20th century, a, a lot of people were cut off from their own families because the borders would go through towns. They go through in northern Maine and, you know, up near, or New York. And uh, it, it had to be very strange to say, you're going to go over to Grandma's house. Uh, we've got to go through customs to do that, you know? And it's just a few miles away. It had to be a really strange thing. But yeah, that's the 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 borders solid, but the culture crosses it for sure. And the families cross it and the histories cross it. We have really complicated the problem of proud to be an American. <laughs> this is well, more Robbie, fractured I... than my singing. <laughs> 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 yeah, I heard some Canadians say, well, we're American too. We're North American. And I, I always look like... <laughs> You know? And the reason I do that is like, well, what's wrong with being Canadian? I mean, it really, come on. I mean, why? I don't understand that. Um, but yeah, it's you, you, your country's called Canada. You're Canadian. Mine's, mine's called the United States of America. So we, we don't call ourselves United Stateers. We call ourselves Americans because the United States are sound stupid. You know? so, well, we can say we're Texan. Mexican is part of I mean, all, all of our states trip off the tongue, right? New Mexico, Texan, Illinois, and no one made yeah. that. <laughs> um, 
Yeah. So in fact, I think, I don't know about this about Canada, but my guess is based on this conversation that we're having, that they have the same kind of fractured sense of identity, identity as well. I mean, we know the Quebecois mm-hmm. don't think they're Canadian, they're Quebecois. No, um, they're unique. <laughs> and, and, and so I, one, I think, I mean, what I, I see the Albertans and Vancouverans, Vancouver, British Columbians, um, seem to have a different distinct feel of themselves from the the east coasters and and that's true you know, so yeah. i think i think one this is okay so the, the 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 boomer pride problem has suddenly reared its head in my imagination now that um mm. b- b- i mean the, 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 the boomers lived through all of this and and were disrupted and completely redefined it, exactly in the time i mean i think the greenwood song is a boomer song right because it's popular in, in yeah the, in the 80s with people that would have been in their 30s right so yeah it, older than us and and it, you know it seems to speak to something that we're proud right we're proud 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 but the problem was that that generation was proud to be something that hadn't quite existed before their parents were put through being in world war ii because they're born to the world war ii people and those world war ii people were redefined as americans outside of like you are going to go into this and like i you know the the proud proudness of the men who died who gave that right to me right the the military homogenization of the united states population happened in those boot camps yeah, they did. Right. People people who came from very different corners of the country suddenly were living together and working together. Right. And and protecting each other. That's a that's a very strong bond that yes. way. I feel um, like we talked about this before, but it's probably worth saying again. It's like the, the, they they define themselves by, you know, like we're the Americans fighting the Germans. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Again. <laughs> You know, or the British again, right? So the twenty, the nineteenth centuries were fighting the British again, and the twentieth centuries were fighting the Germans again. It's like, can we just stop fighting for two minutes? Okay. Well, okay, and the, and the why we can't stop ourselves. fighting is an interesting problem there. Um, yeah, it's I, yeah, yeah. So it's a whole social economic. Well, not even social. It's a whole economic problem. Um, that, well, it's a whole. This is why. Yeah. This is why the the Xers and the and the, and the. I mean, I mean, not, we're Xers, so we're like we want to be proud to be American, but we're like ironic about it or whatever <laughs> because we don't know yeah. what it means anymore. And um, you know, the mockability of the song, as you're saying, it's been mocked. Yeah. Because all of, I mean, this is I I I. This is I think why I I sort of lost heart when I was watching the Trump rally speech thing christy gnome was speaking on it she's not doing well right now <laughs> she shouldn't have shot her dog Ooh, <laughs> no no oh gosh no i listened to that great was greenwald and tucker yes, interview yes that's interesting so greenwald and i are probably the, almost exactly the same age we're both born in 1967 so okay. that whole interview spoke to my gen x heart it really <laughs> <did>. <laughs> and they were talking about christy gnome shooting your dog right and so the so the the superficial i didn't read what she wrote so superficially i I just heard like in the background when news is on or whatever it's like oh she she puts in her in her book that she that she she shot a dog because she had to because it was it was like vicious or something like well okay i I I understand i understand that of course it's going after the chicken right and then as they explain more in this interview i'm like oh my gosh this is horrible why didn't somebody stop her from putting this in a book Yes, where was her editor or her ghostwriter? What was her ghostwriter thinking? Think, I think somebody doesn't like her. her ghostwriter, clearly. <laughs> Go ahead and put it in. It's like, yeah, a bird dog was after chickens. Duh. That's a good point. Yeah. Anyway, so oh. she spoke at this this thing in 2020, and they had all of the the sort of military performance, right? They they had the the jets flying over at the monument. Yeah. Maybe the Blue Angels. Right, I, I remember they that. Had, they had, you know, con- the smoke trails and color and stuff like that. I think I could be, I could be misremembering mm-hmm. and remembering the uh, the jets flying yeah. over yeah. Charles's yeah. coronation. <laughs> it's like the jets. Yeah. I'm, I'm confused. Red, white, and blue. It could be. I mean, it's like which one is it? Um, but but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, that's another stream. <laughs> We're doing well, I, but I, 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 I'm, I'm happy so that we're sticking to the theme that I set up in the opening thing because I sang, right? And then, then this is going to get so <laughs> many views on YouTube. Hi, everyone, because I've learned that you have to start the video with what you're doing <laughs> rather than our little opening thing. So, you know, we're, anyway, that I'm watching that and realizing, I mean, the proud to be an American is to get you to die for that conception, that entity, that well, proud to be, belong to that military group, right? And I mean, even you were, you were wondering, it's like, why would these Germans, the Hessians, why, you know, soldiers come and fight for the, why would you be a mercenary? I mean, well, I can understand why they'd be a mercenary, they're doing it for money, but the way you described it is they were coming over here for ideological reasons. Yeah, I don't, it didn't, in Blackbird, he doesn't say they signed up for the, on the side of the South because they were seceding. However, Ironically, in German context, the Prussians were the never mind. <laughs> Figuring out which you side you're on more. in any of these alignments is uh, pretty challenging. But but that the you know the, the, so this I've thought about this of course that the the flag right and so we talked about the flag a few weeks ago with what happened at at the encampment at Chicago mm -hmm. and how important I recognized it was that this flag does stand for our government, which you hope you yeah. know, behaves according to the laws that we say that we're living under. And so the, it, that's good. <laughs> well, yeah, we need yeah, a government, yeah, right? There, there's like, it, it does help to have in a complex society or even a bigger society. It's like, can, can, how big of a society can you have without any government? Well, none. Right. Yeah. All, yeah. Human groups the need flags, leadership. The flag's not just, it's not just government to me, though. It's, it's To me, it's just a symbol of home. It's the reason we associate it so much with military is because that's usually when you see it is, is at, you know, parades or funerals. And that's that's a pity. <laughs> it should be, you know, we just had a flag day last week. Mm. And uh, I mean, when I was a kid, you would, of course, now I, I did grow up on army bases. So yeah, like the question, where, where, it where all are becomes you from? Clear now. <laughs> yeah. The question, where are you from is a very complicated one for me to answer. Right. right? So I just prefer not to answer it at all. But um, yeah, you would put, you would put them up on national holidays. But I also saw it in, when I lived in Massachusetts briefly about 20 something years ago, um, people were very, they were very patriotic. This is nothing, I wasn't on a military base of any kind. Um, it was just in the town I lived in and there were, there were flags everywhere on flag day. And I think they had a parade too. I thought, oh, that's kind of nice. You know? <laughs> Cause I remember that from when I was a kid, it's very regional how, how, how much patriotic expression you see in public, but most people only see it on TV in the context of, uh, an election and people are very, especially our generation, very cynical when it comes to stuff like that mm -hmm. and uh, or they they see it um you know draped over coffins which we've seen way too much of in our lives right too much so um well no that's, but I, that's why it's triggering nearly no flags in my neighborhood here in chicago like zero i, I almost never no, see them city. um i i remember visiting a friend in, in texas in dallas uh, so this is these things happen for me. I get to go to summer nationals and, you know, fence for the country, um, in, in a couple of weeks and, Great. um, practice that song. <laughs> my teammates will throw me off our, our, we, we don't have it. So this is the, the, it's qualifying competition for the national team by way of our veteran competition. But we also have on the next day, a, you know, put yourselves in, in teams and fence with, you know, fence for fun kind of thing. <laughs> I'm not sure my, my, my teammates are going to be already too embarrassed by my, my inability to, <laughs> to parry right now. Um, uh, but I remember, I think we were in Dallas one summer and I remembered I was visiting a friend there and flags everywhere. And I'm like, Whoa. So this is what it's like having a, like a patriotic neighborhood. Yeah. 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 They do exist. They do exist. They, and it, it's, and it's kind of it's kind of nice because the people who fly them they don't they don't fly them like 365 days of the year. It's just for special special days like Memorial Day or Labor Day, or you know Flag Day, which surprised me. You know um, the Fourth of July, uh, you know, national holidays, and it's it's a, it's a it's a nice tradition. I, I'd like to see it make a comeback, but people have to remember that 
there's there there's good and bad in every person and in every nation because it's made up of people. So you have to you have to emphasize the good and try to increase that and try to decrease the bad. Right, but so but but what we're learning tonight in this discussion is that these these are invented entities. I mean that that they're Which, nations. Um and so, so there was there was yes there was no, a famous right? book from the eighties called uh, by Benedict Anderson called Imagined Communities, which was in in, mm. in fact in the in the nineteen eighties nationalism was a big like scholarly sort of think thing that they think used to think about. It it hasn't mm. since weirdly enough since the nineteen nineteen eighty eighty nine nineteen ninety one we haven't had that much discussion about it. It's like it all vanished. Like we do globalism now. And and even even just thinking about how do really yeah, it's <laughs> just at the time the free trade agreements were being North American free trade agreement was being worked out, huh? I'm so cynical. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> my Gen X. It's my Gen X. Uh, I do it. I do it? enjoy you though. I mean, one there's <laughs> no. It's it's it, this is hard because in fact there's uh, we we've talked about this too before. Sorry guys, we keep doing reruns. We're 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 solidifying our insights. Um. There's not okay. that many Gen X people in in academia right now. It, it's mm -hmm. it's a generation that got wiped from the yeah. the, the uh, we just got scared prof professoriate ranks, and it's tricky to understand exactly how. It's like some of it's because the boomers were young enough when we were coming on the job market that maybe I don't know, but I, I there was there's like a I feel like there's a gap in my own feeling in my department between there's a few of us from Gen X right but there were lots and lots of the boomers who are now retired or 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 you know deceased um and the, the my department feels like it's much more people um millennials around that and the Gen Xers we're, we're incapable of bonding <laughs> you and I can bond right but but, well, but it took four years but yeah it took a while yeah we were slow yeah. No, it's like we even the Gen Xers of my you know generation in my department or in my you know at the university or in my field generally in the scholarly. It's like we're not good at bonding. It's weird. Well, when you as soon as you leave college, you're thrust. Well, we were thrust into a world where we were suddenly a, a generational minority mm -hmm. just about everywhere we went in the job market. Um, at least that was my experience. Um, everybody, everybody was a boomer or a, or, or a very young silent, right? Yeah. Just on just yep. just on the cusp there, and not a whole lot in between. We're, we're the in betweeners, you know. We really um, are. But the thing is, now a so, lot since the boomers are retiring or dying, we're suddenly like, oh wait, what are we supposed to do? Who are we? Are, and and, <laughs> and and the thing is, we're not good at it, and so the younger people are actually already stepping up in in leadership in a lot of ways. Well, they should. That's good. Which, which is um, good, but I think that there yeah. are significant insights that we have that they don't, and yeah, um, we need to talk about it, right? Because we we were there mm -hmm. watching these things transition and change, and one of them we were just saying that in the in the eighties there was a big like field discussion about nationalism, and it it just it mm -hmm. it to some extent fashions come and go in academia. That's like you, you talk about one thing for a while, you get sick of hearing the same conference paper eighteen zillion times because it's the theme, right? Uh, the, yeah. One of the themes, for example, in my field for the the nineties was memory, right? That Mary Carruthers mm -hmm. had done this brilliant book called The Book of Memory, and everybody talked about memory for a decade. And then you just get tired of it because people don't have new insights about the problem. And so it, it sort of goes fallow for a bit. And then and then it takes some time, but it comes back and people start going, wait a minute, we haven't thought about that for a while. And oh, golly, we, you know, you can see it differently. So it doesn't need to be nefarious that people stop talking about nations, but they did. And, what did they start talking about in its place? Um, what became popular? Well, Fukuyama did his end of history claim, right? It's like, oh, well, we, you know, the, the, the liberal democracies have all, you know, established themselves. And that's what, you know, is going to be for the rest of eternity until like 2001. I mean, <laughs> mo talk about mockable, right? Oh, Never mind mocking grief. Greenwood for his, 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 you know, rousing ballad. Yes, I am. I am Ozymandias. <laughs> <laughs> Look upon my works, you... 
and despair. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you got you got to you got to let you know leaders have their statues. Come on, they 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 want to project power. But this is this is actually topical to the problem. Okay, nations mm -hmm. are invented. They are imagined. We we've been talking tonight about how the Germans had to imagine themselves Germany in the late 19th century. It hadn't existed before. They were aware of German as a language, as a philological like experience and, you know, mm -hmm. language groups and things like that, but they had no state. They never had had, a, they had never had a kingdom of Germany. There was never such a thing. That, I mean, the Holy Roman Empire had a king of the Germans or king of the Romans, king of the Romans, right? The only Germania they could imagine was Tacitus. Hmm. I think he was on your list. Yeah. He was on my <laughs> list. I have started, you know, I've started reading. I'm a terribly lazy reader. I don't want to be. I've got, I've got cool books and, you know, lots less money since I met you because I keep buying them. So. I'm a, I'm a good influence on you. You're, you're investing in knowledge. You are. You are. <laughs> anyway, so they, I mean, the 19th century, they're obsessed with Tacitus because at least it's got the word Germany in the title. <laughs> yes. And German Germanicus, I'm reading about. <laughs> it just means brother. It's hilarious. So does it? Yeah. Oh, like Germano. Okay. Got yeah, it. Germania. So oh. so Tacitus seems to describe this region. And so they try to then imagine themselves as whatever they are. And that that of course fuels all of the, you know, the Wagnerian imagine the mythology. Creating an entity that you could be proud of in these terms with a doll and a flag. Because you have to motivate people. You have to motivate people to like bond. Creating a federation, yeah. To bond. And so you, I mean, songs are huge, right? Deutschland, Deutschland, mm -hmm. über alles works because people will sing the song. And then yeah. having sung the song together. And they also, um, you know, they had flag processions and stuff like that. But basically singing, I, there's one of the great, one of the, there was all these interviews that the me with the three craters symposium did and one of the ones we did was with michael walsh who mm -hmm. is a music critic but he's also written some very interesting sort of political books in the past five ten years and some of them are about how music has defined a lot of history because there'll be like the marseillaise or something like that or he says that you can trace the origins of this war to that song right it's like mm. th these songs that's interesting create this feeling of reality right this sort of mystic bonding it, it, they, mocking green capture... song, song is going to be bad because it means well if that was the thing that was bonding us together and you know having that whatever musical effect it has and then that becomes ridiculous it breaks right you can't hold on to it well anymore. it's capturing it's capturing an emotional moment and it's and it's it, when, when you sing along with it you're you're caught up in the emotion yourself and then it just increases and spreads and it, and if you keep singing it at every rally it just keeps going yep. on and on and on yep. right the thing that bothered me about the greenwood song i think it's a very sweet sentiment but what's always bothered me about it was the was the video about all these farmers losing losing their land and, yeah. and, and well I, I'm, I'm still proud to be an american and in the back of my mind it's it's always been this niggling little thought that it sounds like it was this this was just custom ordered to calm people down and stop them from being angry about all of these farmers losing their land. I think it actually was. And I I never liked that. I thought these these people have a right to be angry. You know, it's kind of like the 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 argument about student debt loan forgiveness, mm, right? Yeah. It's like, well, you took the loan, you should pay it back. You know, well, stupid you, you know, you're now you're now you're going to be in debt for the rest of your life. Student loans, it's stupid that you can't discharge this in bankruptcy. It's dumb. Right. You know, um, these farmers, I think they could probably discharge in bankruptcy. But if, if you're if you're constantly being encouraged with false promises of a return on your investment to get these loans and you lose your land. Yes, you're responsible for taking the loan, but there's there is a slight bit of coercion going on there that has to be addressed. When you're when you're when you're telling people who d really don't know any better that there, there's a very strong possibility they could lose everything, so then that song came out. It was like it was kind of trying to. I thought it was trying to paper over that, and I, I never liked that. 
about. the thing is, I think you're right. I think I read a, a bit about it or something. It's like, and the Greenwood, I mean, he becomes the guy who sings that song after it, it gets yeah. so popular. Um, and then, and then it's like, I mean, this, this is what's like, I, 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 lo I, I think I cried when I realized the song had broken for me. This was, oh. this was some years ago. Right. And I was, I was just like, I hate this. I, and, and, and the thing is, I, I was thinking about that. I, my father died 19 years ago. Um, mm. I, I it sort of, I watched him lose heart about a lot of stuff over his life. I mean, I said he was mm. in Thailand. He was, you know, he, he had to deal with what happened in, in Vietnam directly. Um, so did my dad. Yeah. But then on, on the other end, he, he actually had funeral detail. Oh, wow. As, See, as so what, man. Once my dad wasn't able to save. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, you know, God. I mean, this makes me so we did we did have some images and I say we climbing the climbing the uh, the angels climbing up to virtue and we're trying to find it right now. But the first image you have was this corporate virtue signaling with the pride <laughs> month rainbow. Right. Yeah. And yeah. I think I think we've gotten to the place now where we can address this of like we are being given flags. That were meant to rally. But to for something and i mean it's it's heartbreaking to realize that the american flag so i the thing is this is actually a military flag because it's the it's the the banner it's the battle banner right it's like the the stars and stripes are it was the the fort right fort mchenry right the yeah, fort the baltimore. baltimore fort and these are these i mean these are designed as military flags always that's you the, the banners that we have as nation national flags were in origin um banners for marching behind right it's the standard they're right? battle standards yeah yeah so that you can recognize which group you're supposed to be with so you don't shoot the wrong people yeah um yeah <laughs> but it doesn't have to stay that does it it doesn't have to only be that so this here but this then the, this is a super question it's like can you know what will bond people right what will and and this is military bonding is incredibly powerful yes one you go to the through the training together and that creates you know trauma and hardship and and camaraderie mm -hmm. i mean if you actually have to you know go into combat together and you rely on each other not to die i mean we we get we get little bits of bonding just from fencing together Right. Sure. And that, yeah. And that's simply volunteering to be on a team together, right? And I was like, yeah, it, sports, right? S sports are incredibly important for creating that feeling of us and them, and they're it's fun and it's joyous and it's cheering and and you know, I the, I mean, one of the things I d I dislike about the corporate virtue signaling the Pride Month, it's like you're trying to you're trying to create this kind of feeling of camaraderie in the fakest way possible <laughs> the fakest way possible yeah now that now that we've got you all understanding that you need to revere flags i don't know where they got that idea since they've been championing burning american flags as, as, a, as a as a free speech moment for 40 years right right but let's forget all that you're supposed to revere flags here have this rainbow one right so now it's becoming you know f f people are being charged with felonies for for desecrating what a religious symbol what is your message here right because the rainbow on that comic i gave you says virtue signaling yes there's no virtue there well but that's, but that's the, the, the irony but we've still, already accepted it okay it, it, but it's not just it's corporate virtue signaling too so it's i mean yeah and, and this this being this it's a, it's a no it's a kind of terrifying problem because we're saying yeah. our, you know, nations have been taken, you know, taken over by these multinational corporations, which is mm -hmm. one of the problems that we're dealing with. Um, that yeah, the nation, in the nation is now in, in yeah, effect early. of you know of neighbors and you know city dwellers and farmers and everything opposed to these um, imperial pirate ventures. 
River Pirates mm-hmm. of the Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> I love that title so much. <laughs> I'd watch that movie. Somebody listening out <laughs> River, River Pirates and the Miss. But I mean, so one, I mean, <laughs> if uh, if you've all if you followed us to this point, and say take heart. This is you know we're in the same story we've been in all along, right? That the sort of feeling of there was a time when it was pure and virtuous. It, it, no, pure and virtuous. It, never, not that. How many blew that one? But that there was a time when these things were not complicated as as claims never oh. existed. Right. It's like all of literally all of history is conflicts like this. Right. And this is talking about being proud Catholic. Right. I'm sorry, Vigano is about to be excommunicated. I don't like all the things Pope Francis says. I am not going to get dragged into (laughs) one of these again, because guess what? This is the history of the institution. Right. It's like pick a schism. She froze. Oh, no. Yeah, no, I didn't freeze. Oh, okay. No, I'm not getting dragged into this either. <laughs> not even, not even virtually. <laughs> not even virtually. Yeah, I'm, I'm already, I'm already pissing off uh, old friends over this. So, but, but think about that. Okay. This is, it's like, we're, we're happy saying proud to be an American, even though we're like really worried about a lot of things America has, America has done as its empire and things like that. But we are proud. I mean, it's like this little scrap of remembering what it felt like to have the Memorial day parade with our bikes before the swim pool opened. Right. I was, I was good. It was, you know, it's like, it had felt like you were from somewhere. And then of course, 1986, Mm -hmm. I go over to study in England and my friends are all socialist or just English, you know, whatever. And uh, the Iran Contra hearings get going and, you know, trading guns for, you know, drug, yeah, golly, you know, it's like, and, and then you're horribly embarrassed. And then, can't be proud to be an I, American I, anymore because you, these guys that you're, you know, meeting on. I know too. I know too much about European history to uh, allow a European to make me feel embarrassed for something my country has done. Fair, <laughs> very fair, very fair. I, I I make people uncomfortable in situations like that. I, I think you're virtuously doing so, but the, the but the problem is okay. No, but the, because I, I I don't think you're doing it with anger, right? It's like you're doing it with with honesty and and facts, right? The, the, those facts we'll that we're supposed that, to yeah. love. But but the problem is there will be, and you've just demonstrated it with the the Catholic one. There will be instances in these where you, I mean, I'm not saying which side you're on because I don't know which side you're on, and I don't want to care, right? And I'm not even mm-hmm. sure which side I'm on. I'm just like, oh my gosh, just be medieval. I don't know. But wait, the Middle Ages, they didn't know what, who was the Pope for like seven, you know, 30 years Yeah, we either. had like 20 fake Popes, I think. What? Something, I, I read we had like something somewhere between 20 and 40 fake Popes in history at some point. So there's, yeah. lot, there's always been lots of people saying, no, he's the real one. No, he's not the real one. You know, that's, that's not uncommon. I guess who was often involved in that? The not Germans. <laughs> <laughs> Say, the Germans again. The Germans again. I'm sensing a pattern. <laughs> yes. So I mean, for example, like in the name of the rose, the debate that they're having um, is mm-hmm. is in the context of some of the clerics are being protected by the Louis, the emperor, against the Pope. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they have a disagreement yeah. over whether the church should have property or not. Right. Uh, so, so again, it's like, but, but it, I think it's, I mean, it's, we say everybody has blind spots. Everybody has, in fact, these kinds of things that you will have responses to. I mean, I, the, the Palestine Israel one right now, it's, it's been challenging for people too. Right. Mm-hmm. Tucker spent way too much time in that interview with Clint Greenwald saying, I love, you know, I just don't care that much. And it's I like, know. you said it now six like, times I'm counting. <laughs> I know. It's like, who, who are you saying this for? We, we believed you the first time. <laughs> or the eighth or, you know, it's like kept having yeah. to say it over and over again because what they were talking about was it sounded obsequious, which is getting which is involved because... in having to take sides. Right. Because a lot of people are being attacked for, for, for not, um, you know, being, proud to be a Zionist, right? Because right. you're proud to be an American. It's the same kind of pattern, right? Yes. It's like if you criticize, if you criticize your country at all, well, you're not proud to be American. Well, well, yes, yes, I am. And I'm proud of the First Amendment too. So get that through your head, right. you know? And so yeah, Tucker made some 
and Greenwald both made some excellent points. It's like, uh, I, don't, I don't recognize this country if you're saying I, I can't, there's a, a country I can't criticize and it's not mine. Right. Uh, that that right. should, I mean, I'm allowed to criticize my own. I should be allowed to criticize anybody's. Well, you are, except that one over there. It, none of it makes sense. None of it's going to pass muster with the Supreme Court, you know. Mm-hmm. So, but it's the same. I see the same time of type of machinations happening in, in public discourse where people are, are being shut up. The same thing that happened to the Germans in the German Americans during the First World War. Stop reading that newspaper. Stop speaking in that language. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Stop saying this. Stop saying that. It's like on Tucker. I'm absolutely 100 percent with him. I'm an American. I'll say whatever the hell I want, whenever the hell I want, wherever the hell I want. As long as I'm in my country, I'm allowed to do this. First Amendment says I'm allowed to do this. Right. And people have been for the past 20 years so brainwashed into thinking that we, we can't we can't engage in microaggressions. You can't say something if somebody's going to get angry. That could be hateful. It's like you have the right to hate people. You know that. Right. No, you don't. No, no, you literally do have the right to feel and think anything you want to. And that's being applied to politics right now. I'm not even going to say it's I'm not going to say, it. oh, that's dangerous. But because have we ever not lived in dangerous times where people could misuse, you know, their their public trust? And no, misuse we've the always, it's always been in dangerous no, we times. Haven't. That's again, right. this is a good lesson that, you know, hopefully we're giving from my reading the Blackburn book about Germany. It's like which yeah. which generation didn't have this kind of challenge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I read one story about the Germans sometime last year. There, there have been a lot of articles written about, about them. That book sounds great. It's, I should I should lose more of my money <laughs> and buy another one. But truly, yeah, I, I, I'm not going to hold you to keeping up with me. I, ha, I do have I do have a research. I keep up with you. You're, I do have a research insane. budget that helps with some of that. I just meant I can't keep up with your reading. It's like well, mm. for one, you're a speed reader, but I digress. Well, it, it gets easier um, to read. It's 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 the more you read, the more you can read because you've got anchors for stuff that oh, you know. Yeah. Remember that memory book That's I just, just told you about? Yes. Right. That yeah. one of the th- one of the reasons we got fascinated by that was. It was clear it she opened Mary Crothers opened that book with how Thomas Aquinas was a genius in his own day. And it mm-hmm. wasn't the way Einstein is understood to be genius. Thomas Aquinas dictated five books at a time. Like five That's different crazy. books. Because he had five scribes and he he was ordered it's like Fisher playing multiple games of chess, right? And Oh my gosh, he was like so he was like a savant. He wasn't just super smart. He was like in, insanely autistically smart probably but he was also well trained in the way that they all were in those days of training their memories so that they were they they chunk right. things and they put them all in order right and what right that right right the palace of memory right, right. That you're making your head right, right. okay and and your mother showed how they the book the book layout and things from the period is designed to help you do that so when 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 we can't remember stuff because we're online all the time, it's one of the bad things is you have no layout. I mean, there's layouts in the scrolls and stuff like that. But the way that we move in ideas from here, I'm looking at that click, link that click, link that click, link, and then you're lost. You have no idea what you just did. Um, mm. I think it's because you're you're looking at the same screen and it's it's not physically anchored in any way a book a physical book the reason to buy physical books yeah. and read them is you physically engage with them and it helps your memory oh i i much easier read um physical books i bought a lot I, what it so what i tend to do to try to save money is if if i have something i want to keep that's reference type material i definitely get a solid book for that right but if it's just like a, a short novel or just you know something i took a, a mild interest in for five minutes and it's easy to read i'll get an electronic form of that but I still find them difficult to read just because it's on a screen. Right. So it's just like physically, it's different different way of reading. And and yeah, so I'm glad I'm I'm glad at least half my books were <laughs> were actual physical books because yes, that does help it a hel- lot. It helps, it helps keep you marked. And you know the the more you the more you read and anchor and stuff. One one of the you know so one of the disciplines I have, which I hope I'm demonstrating I can do, is because I've memorized a lot of chronology. You, you make, it's like a memory palace of dates and then I learn a new right. thing and I attach it to those things. So, I mean, dates are great. This, you know, like 1848, mm-hmm. 1871, 1914. And then anything new that you learn, you remember it in relation to those anchors. And so it- This is fascinating. As it, Just as you said those dates, multiple things popped into my head in association with them. Right. 
right? Just you know, stuff you would learn in grade and high school just popped into my head. Oh yeah, 1914, the Lusitania, you know? See, <laughs> it works. All these things are going through my head. And then if you've got if you've got a picture image of something that happened, then everything will attach to it and then yep. you'll be able and to have yep, it's all about it's it's, it's mm -hmm. all there. Now I forgot yeah. what we were talking about. <laughs> I was talking about <laughs> things I had read. Oh, so about but the we Germans, were talking about the, right? the hate speech and the problem of... Right, the hate speech. So the, there was one story I read about a, a woman just being verbally accosted mm. uh, on, a, on a public transportation in New York City because she was reading a German language newspaper. Wow. And that was a trend. People were encouraged to go out and attack Germans verbally um, and just basically drive them from the public sphere, drive anything German out of the public sphere is really despicable well, in the way. So we have, we have done. the sign now. I got some more of your, you know, it's like the, the, now everyone, hey, you have a lot of context for understanding what's going on with these kinds of images, right? In this house, we believe yeah. black lives matter. Women's rights are human <laughs> rights. No human is illegal. Science is real. Love is love. Kindness is everything. And those signs are doing some of what you're describing. It's like, it's gaslight. Yeah, but that is gaslight because every every phrase you just read implies that the person reading it is something bad that needs to be corrected right. by this wonderful person who put the sign up. Right. It's very aggressive. And I, I, I when I see something like that, I'm like, OK, mental note, stay away from that person. That's not a good person. <laughs> That's not a nice person. That's a person who, who already thinks that I'm a horrible person. She doesn't even know me. They've never met or he's it's going to be a she, you know. Sorry, sorry, women. It's got to be a she. We Gen Xers, we're just we're just plowing through all of this. It's like know. we're proud to be Americans, and we don't like these signs <laughs> because I mean the yeah, one they're saying. I, I, so this is the inclusion exclusion part. It's like so you know you're yeah. proud to be an American, don't you want other people to be Americans too? And it's like well okay, and then we're in this problem of like yeah. define American. Um, yeah. The when you were saying people were told, you know, can't be, can't think German, can't do this, can't do that, can't do that. And that is yeah. what, that is what Tucker and, and, and Greenwald exactly. Greenwald it's were talking about. There's right like, now. okay, so has somehow Gen X grew, we grew up with this expectation that we should be able to talk about stuff. I mean, even though it's like, think about it. It's like, because we were born right, of, right as in the late sixties, right as the free speech movement was getting off where, yeah. where you should be able to say anything. And we were young I enough to believe it. <laughs> well, you can't say anything. It says, well, it'll have consequences. It's like, well, that sounds like a threat. Okay. How, 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 how much back and forth do you want to do here? Yeah. Okay. Because I think, you know, I think precedent, legal precedent backs me up and saying what I want to say. You, you can't yell fire in the theater. Everybody thinks, oh, well, I'll just, I'll just make sure I'll, I cause a riot. And I can remember thinking about that like this when I was a child. Mm -hmm. Just cause a riot, then the, you'll stop people from saying what you want them to say, right? That's what people are doing today. They're they're, they're claiming they're trying they're trying to preempt you your speech by by threatening to riot or actually rioting. Right. I mean, but the but the irony or of it is withholding money in, in, in or the kicking end, you out of school. We have we have we have these bumper sticker cars, right? Um, which oh, yeah, those are always great. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's like, I need to look at it on my, my other, my, my screen so that I can see what the, it, it says. Um, okay. So this one's the car. It has like a coexist guard the grizzly. When fascism comes to America, it will be wrapped in the flag and carrying a cross. Proud. You're bad. America. bad Rich. Um, <laughs> we are defined not only by what we create, by, but what we refuse to destroy. This is somebody. This is somebody who's telling you who they are, and they're wonderful. I just want you to know that. Go on. Proud. Um, when did helping the poor become a sin? Compassion yeah, is the radicalism you? of our time. The Dalai Lama. Why aren't you compassionate? It is not the yeah. answer that enlightens, but the question. Namaste. The divine <laughs> in me blesses and honors the divine in you. Whatever you do, it is necessary. It is necessary. Is it necessary? Truthful and kind. Say I do to equal marriage rights. War costs, lives, health, education, environment, economy, respect. Um, I do support marriage equality. Humankind, be both. Oh, that's the worst. That one's that one's the worst. Look, you inhuman clod. Why don't you just be kind? <laughs> 
got hope. See, this is the Gen X cynicism. This is, but it's, yes, but this it's, is, you know, then Katie sees this car. Civil marriage is a civil right. A closed mind is a wonderful thing to lose. Uh, yeah. Change is inevitable. Growth is optional. It's so, you know what it is? It's just so finger wagging. The whole car is just one big finger wag. <laughs> Okay, but we have we do need to figure out what's different between this car and proud. Proud, proud, proud. Usually proud, when proud, people cause... Proud. look, okay, we got another <laughs> car. So I'll show you the next the next car. And it says, Freedom lives. I'm Joe Biden. I forgot this message. <laughs> the media <laughs> is the virus. One. Infowars.com. Pray for Alex. Uh, I said mm. that. Uh, make America great again. Impeach Biden. Fauci lied. See, we're not laughing at these because we agree with them. No. COVID is a scam. Yep. Legalize freedom. It's... Trump, it, Trump, life is fiery with its beauty. Infowars.com. A lot of Infowars.com. Okay, is... so you know what? This the one's in Arizona. To... <laughs> I don't, yeah. the other one, got, the other one, the, the license plate was completely blurred out, so we don't know where that one is. Uh, but this one. This I think one, it was Washington State, actually. This one's from Arizona. Free men do not comply. These colors don't run, they reload. Okay, so that, that fits with the battle, you know, it's a battle standard for sure, but um, when tyranny- That driver threatened to shoot me, I'm calling the cops. <laughs> <laughs> when tyranny becomes law, rebellion becomes duty. Thomas Jefferson, arrest Fauci, ba vaccines kill, Max are, masks are for slaves and criminals. Freedom okay, is that free. One, that one, masks are for slaves and criminals. Okay, that's the only one you've listened so far. That is similar to the first uh, group of bumper stickers, and that okay. it's a direct it's a direct uh, confrontation to whoever's reading it, mm. right? It's, it's also a the one that's most like scratched out. <laughs> so people yeah, have been scratching at it. Yeah, <laughs> so it's yeah, it's so the first the first car it's it's all I'm this and I'm wonderful and you're horrible and you need to change. The other one is I'm this and I'm these people are wonderful and I group these people and. Some of them said I'm wonderful. I didn't see a whole lot of finger wagging except for that one. Absolute proof that, of that. election fraud. Take back our country. Arrest Bill Gates. Yes, you're right. Freedom isn't free. That one's a bit finger wagging. If guns are outlawed, only bit. outlaws will have guns. Yeah, these are all these are all political statements um, that that aren't necessarily personal, mm. right? So the first group they were getting very personal. It was similar to the the sign on the lawn. Yeah. Right, that you read in the first one. They were all kind of personal attacks of I want to reach person reading this, and I know you're stuck in your car and you have to read, so I'm gonna tell you something <laughs> right now. They're both doing that, but one of them is aimed at the individual, and the other one is just kind of aimed at um at politics, I guess, at anybody or expressing what, what they believe is going on in the world. Okay. Um, a little more it's a little more general, I think. I think it's it's when it's when it's directed right at somebody who's you know, held captive in traffic. That's when it gets obnoxious. I don't have any bumper sticker in my car. I wouldn't. I just think it's that because I, I think that's what it is. I think you're forcing the person behind you to look at it, and I just like it's just kind of rude. But uh, that's okay. So that's just my personal choice. Yeah, I don't have any bumper stickers either. Um, I, I used to have when I was in college. I would have uh, in Houston. I had rice stickers, right, for my university. But I haven't had any, oh, right. I haven't had, I, and, and, and I, it, the, you know, the spirit where I certainly, I have, I do have some stickers, some fun stickers. Oh, look, I have a sticker on my, my iPad now from my university, right? But, but it's, oh, it's, nice it's, the, it's, it's the, uh, the stained glass window from Rockefeller Chapel, right? So my, that's pretty. My, my one little bit of spirit yeah. wear from, from my employer. You have pride employer. in your university. Well, no, I like that so window. That's a... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay so but this is like i the um pride in schools is an interesting phenomenon of these two bumpers do you think my sense is both of these people both of these car owners would say they were proud to be american do you agree oh no okay I, the first one isn't isn't at all it's just not, because do you think the 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 coexist one and the yeah, I think this is the same. This is the same type of bumper sticker. Uh, Fascism comes to America, oh. be wrapped in the flag and carrying a cross. So right, okay. that's why. Yeah, this is the same person who said, you know, God bless everybody, not just America. You know, mm -hmm. after nine, after 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 nine eleven, it's like, well, people were like in mourning and 
and legitimately praying, you know, for God to please bless our country. Right. It, it was it was a request. It wasn't a statement like we're great. God bless us. Past tense. No, no. Please bless us. We need we need your blessings. Right. This was an actual prayer. So and people were offended by that. Uh, some people I said, God bless everybody. And it was like, kind of like, who do you think you are? The bumper stickers tone that is, you know, right. asking God to bless America. Like, don't you care about anybody else? It's like, it was so negative, you know, so he tries to do something positive and just, they just, you just get negativity hurled at you, you know, in response. And that's, that's just the tone, the tone on the right, I like guess what people would call the right wing bumper stickers. It's, it's a bit obnoxious, you know, it's ostentatious. Um, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but I, it, most of it, like I said, it didn't seem personal except for the one, I forget which one it was though, but you came one and it immediately clicked. I'm like, oh yeah, that's like the first group. The, right? um, but, uh, masks are for slaves and criminals. Right. Right. Like what, what are you doing wearing a mask? Right. right? Is what that bump of sticker is saying. It's like, it's none of your business. They can do what they want. You know, <laughs> I don't care. People want to wear masks. They can't, I think they're stupid. But I'm not going to put a bumper sticker on the back of my car telling you that, you know, right. it's, it's like, like I said, it's, you've got a captive audience. It's not polite. But anyway. Um, You're looking for another one, aren't you? <laughs> no. Well, I think it's, so I, the, 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 it's the nationalism question which is is the i mean i i think i think this this is good because i mean we, we we're doing this series on pride in pride month and mm -hmm. one of the features of it is is being frustrated at the replacement of one kind of pride identity with the one that we are actually proud of yeah America. right right and that's that goes back to the first uh the, the the first comic is a corporate pride, right? Right, being and, shot out of like a water cannon at people, like force fed, force fed this, which it does it, it does it does feel like that. If they did it with the American flag, you'd be more justified in doing it because it, it is the flag of your nation, right? The, the the rainbow flag is not. So people are reacting negatively against it the way they would react negatively to like scolding bumper stickers. Well, but the so the coexist car is going to think that the the these colors don't run. They reload car is spraying flag yes. at it. Yeah, yeah, they are. But the coexist one is also that's that's got to be the most obnoxious of all 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 of them the because coexist. they. It, yeah, well, one, it seems to me it's, that the, it's theologically stupid. <laughs> it is theologically stupid, but also it it expresses, in my opinion, it expresses hatred for all of these religions. Mm. Can't you people just get along? Look what you're doing, uh, you know? Right, and of course, it doesn't understand that they. I, this, I mean, Tucker, unfortunately, talking talk about Tucker. Tucker, unfortunately, fall fell into this whatever religion, and I think that goes to what we were talking about in the first episode with Kant and morality. Right. That mm -hmm. that's a, that's a that's a sleight of hand of religion for morality. You're saying every religion teaches. So I'm just like, no, they don't. <laughs> no, they don't. Um, and one day, yeah, one day we need to too. do a proper a proper discussion of why. I mean, we're working on getting up to the point where you can say, look, Christianity is the truth. <laughs> yeah. But people are bad at explaining that theologically, and so it just feels like the canon of color. Like, why can't you just believe us? Why can't you just, mm -hmm. like, take what we're saying as, as as true and you're hateful if you don't? Right. Right. Yeah, stop reading that German newspaper. Put it away. <laughs> right. But that being, but the, you. you know, the Verein, the, what is it? The, how do they say it? In, in, uh, what is the United States in German? Oh, gosh, I don't remember. <laughs> Verein is a club. I, re I read that in the German today. Um I had my last German lesson in first grade, so. <laughs> well, I had, so I realized I took German in, when I was in, I moved around, not as much as you probably, but um, we moved to Louisville from Albuquerque, and in Louisville, or Louisville, um, I could take German. I couldn't take German when we moved back to Texas, and so that's how I ended up taking Latin. That is really interesting. How did they not have it in Texas? Because there was a lot of German immigration to Texas, and, and what was then Mexico, even before the, the Republic right. of Texas. Um but um, just, the German is, uh, you could you could study that. It was a very popular language to study in high school um, until the 1950s. Yeah. Even. 
but it's in the local high school where I live now. It's in the local high school where I lived on the West Coast. Um, so it's still around. And the thing is that that was interesting. The last place I lived, the, the school board wanted to get rid of it. And the teachers rebelled. <laughs> they said, no, we spent years building up this program. We want to keep it. They were very proud of it. So, you know, it's making a comeback, I guess. <laughs> I, well, I just read, I think they canceled the German program in the lab school here, which is not good. That's like, oh, that's too bad. About, we, we were founded by, you know, university president who modeled it on Germany. <laughs> the yeah. German university system. How can we not have German in the high school, in the school? Mm, um, yeah. That's a pity. I always think it's a pity when any language is suppressed. Well, but there's so I many. Think. I mean, that the sort of choosing which one you teach the schools. Mm -hmm. I mean, German is because they didn't do the colonies terrifically well. They they're not one of the big um, in, international languages, right? So here, yeah. so the the high school on the West English, Coast, Russian, is, Chinese. Yes, they wanted to replace they wanted to replace German with Mandarin, right? Because if that, that's that's the next big language, right. not Japanese, Mandarin, Mandarin. right? And the, the teachers rebelled because there was in that area I lived there, there had been a lot of German immigration. So I think to them, it was a nostalgic thing. It's like, right. you know, this is part of our history. We want to keep it. Well, there's a lot of Chinese now. <laughs> not, there, not where I was living. Oh, okay. There wasn't. <laughs> I, I, the, the thing is I yeah. haven't, I, you know, there's the significant Chinese immigration into the United States in the 19th century too. Yes. And you know, yeah. So in some places I've lived like in, when I lived in San Francisco, Obviously, there was yeah a huge uh, Chinese population there. Right. We got Chinese New Year off. We got, and I was always jealous of the Chinese kids because they came in comparing how much money they got from all their relatives. <laughs> it was a competition. I'm like, oh, well, we just, we just had the day off. We didn't get any money. <laughs> okay, now, it's the, that, now I'm now I'm on to the kids who were talking to this guy, try, practicing their English, and gave him origami. That was so cute. Orga yeah, the, the, that was adorable. Or origami treats for doing their interview with him. I was like, oh my gosh, yes. that's so polite. Uh, but they were it sweet, but they were like saying it together. <laughs> they were clearly <laughs> practicing their lessons together. And so everything they said was together. But yes. That's so okay, cute. so we're, 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 okay, I'm, I'm zooming through some of your, George Clooney, we're going to ignore him right now in the smug alert. And we're going to go to <laughs> oh, oh, Red Biden, funny. who is about to is oh, is yes. is the debate happening oh, next week? The the Trump Biden debate. Yeah, yeah. debate. Okay. okay. Yeah. Right. Whatever the performance. it is. The, yes, the clown show. The clown show. Um. Proud to be an American. <laughs> it's the deep shape road show clown show. What do we do with this, right? And I think this is uh, mock it. Mercilessly. mercilessly. <laughs> well, yes, we're proud to be Americans and we're going to mock our political leaders as viciously as we possibly can because that makes us American. Back with Satan. Well, wait, it, no. <laughs> wait, it, well, it kind of does because our the First Amendment was based upon people's, uh, they wanted to acknowledge people's right to, to say anything they wanted to against their government right. without going to jail, which doesn't exist anymore, unfortunately. Hopefully it makes comeback. Supreme Court, are you listening? Oh, do you no. know fun fact about the Gen Xers? Have have I have I told you this before? So, um, when Kavanaugh was going through his hearings, um, and and they were doing the the review on whether or not he had behaved badly with what's her name? Oh, right. Milo mocked her. Ooh, he's going to appear now. Um, and 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 Kavanaugh. Milo, Milo, Milo. <laughs> We're gonna that would that maybe we'll go back to the George Clooney one. <laughs> what, what what was he doing with that statue? Whoops, Clooney. The, yeah, he he got he got it was an Oscar and he was making a speech and the speech was how proud he was to be a Hollywood lander. Oh, no, a no Hollywood city. lander. That, we need to do a proper it. episode on the name of that city. Yeah, that's kind of well. A pueblo. It's, it's, Wait, 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 wait. Oh, oh, the, of Los Angeles. Yes, you mean. It's, yeah. What is it? Yes. It's, it's, it's a long name. Oh, Our yes. Lady of the Angels of the Portuancola, I think. Yes. Portuancola? And you know what that means? Yeah. <gasps> so good. The doorway? No. El Pueblo de Nuestra Señora de los. The, I used to be able to say Spanish. El Pueblo 
de Nuestra Señora La Reina de Los Angeles. Um, on the Portiancula River, which had been named, right. it's Franciscan. It's so beautiful. Hold that oh. thought, dot, dot, dot. We will get to it. Anyway, so he, okay. Clooney is trying to say he is um, the sexiest man alive, Hollywoodlander. Oh, because he ended by expressing his pride in being as out of touch with the rest of the world as Hollywood celebrities are accused of being because he argued that distance allowed Hollywood to achieve progress in areas where the world hadn't caught up. That's worse than those bumper stickers. They are just so stupid and they need our leadership <laughs> so much. And I'm so proud to be a Hollywood leader where at least I know I'm smart. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's like sexy. It was I'm, so I'm obnoxious virtuous. that even... Yeah, even leftists were like, what the F? <laughs> the next day, so the Atlantic wrote about it and it was like, this is so obnoxious. And then South Park just eviscerated him. Oh, is that really, the really smug funny. one? The, the smug alert? Yeah, smug alert. <laughs> yes, he, he, he spawned a smug alert <laughs> rolling out of Los Angeles across the Southwest. Okay, but this is, this is like, this is a different kind of problem from the regional flyover versus you know uh i, I don't know not just the coastal elites being proud of themselves but this the, to a certain extent this is the problem with the way the united states was founded in the first place because it's smugly enlightenment right i mean the united True. states is to a large extent founded by people who were smugly con convinced that they were philosophically in the right gotta go back to that bumper mm -hmm. sticker I, I keep silencing her today. <laughs> She's like, oh, no, God. I'm not silenced. <laughs> okay, I got you on Catholic pride. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> you wouldn't You wouldn't take sides. Um, oh, that. Oh, no, I'm taking a side. I just don't think we need to do that here. <laughs> but this, but the, see, this is the problem. The proud to be an American is smugly First Amendment is i mean is, is tucker not being i mean the, this the, are we not in, in this sort of proud pride problem it's like what are we proud of oh. as americans and this and this oh. to go to go with vox's insistence that america is pros the posterity which you I, I think i didn't answer what you said about that that it's posterity okay. americans for those for whom the constitution was written and it's like yeah so my i i definitely have for ourselves and our posterity. So I have, I, we've mentioned it many times, but I have, you know, DAR, Daughters of the American Revolution lineage on both sides of my mom and my dad, but we also have all those Germans who were not yeah. posterity. So which are you going to decide I am? Right. The German right. part or the, once, the posterity part? Once you're thoroughly mixed, right? Do you, do you, or do you go to the one drop rule for DAR yeah. members? What do you do, right? Well, and you know, I think Germany was a little bit accused of <laughs> playing that game, right? Deciding yeah. who belonged by in Germany, but by, by by the way of you know, are you sufficiently well mixed in with whatever determination we've used to say you count? Yeah. Yeah, we, we need we in America. America, you know, we get, we, you don't get to be smug for long in in the in the mosaic arc, because then you. <laughs> <laughs> we're, I mean, I like I, I. The thing is, Germany isn't pure, and it wasn't, and it was a fantasy of its purity that they were trying to invent to have a country at all, because they were so regional. Well, I don't think they were obsessed with 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 purity um like blood purity that i think that was that was an american uh oh yes an they, american they import that germany. from the united states <laughs> they do Eugenics. they imported it from Mar they imported it from margaret sanger yeah. yes um she she was their she was their biggest spokesperson and uh yeah so that that came much later so i think i think i i'm going to take a wild guess here and say it was a cultural thing they were they were trying to see if you fit in you know if you were german if you were german by culture I, Language. We, I so this this is I think we're gonna have to be a, to be continued on this because I read this far in the book. Yeah. Right? What happens with the Germans abroad in I mean mo half that's like a small part portion of the book is 16th and 17th century, medium port, portion of the book is 18th and 19th century, the half of the book is the 20th century. So you know what happened to Germany in the world 
in the mm -hmm. 20th century is a huge part of the, the question. And what you've been talking about with like the United States in the First World War prevented people from acknowledging their German ancestry or, you know, relations yes. because, you know, we're at war with them. And then Germany right. turns around in the in, you know, in the, in the 20s and 30s and uses those tactics itself. Hmm. How much did they learn from the United States? Again, <laughs> proud to be hmm. over here. <laughs> I'm going to go to the next slide. Let's see. Okay, so we have, but now we have, you know, Biden looking like the fascist that the flag people are supposed to, wait, yes. you know. Yeah, dark Brandon, yeah. Hilarious, whoever set that stage up. I mean, what were they thinking? <laughs> They, they, they're, 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 they're thinking they can, they can rub their power into the face of the American people. They know, they knew what the image looked like. They thought it was funny. It, it, it just looks pathetic to me, but I mean, the, it is pathetic. And, and the, and the patheticness of, it's like, okay, so your next, your next picture for us was Stalin. <laughs> right. So that, yeah. The, so what I was looking for when I was looking for these images, I said, you know, when, when I came to pride is I was trying to find examples of where a, a public official acted prideful, mm. right? So, um, so in the United States, um, there are no monuments put up to presidents while they're president. That's not done. They're not even putting put on stamps until they're dead, mm. right? The, the the Lincoln Memorial went up in the like 20s. seventy years, yeah, yes, yeah, like seventy years after. after he died, or the sixty years, almost seventy years. It it just isn't done. That's that's not that's that's not part of our culture. Um, to, to, to do that. And I, you know, I'm, we, I guess we could argue why, why that is, but it just is. That's just not something that we do. That is not something that stopped, you know, uh, the, the Stalinists in, in the Soviet sphere from erecting a monument to Stalin right. while he was still alive. Now, I think it was finished after his death, but it was started when he was alive and he approved of it. And uh, it was a, there was another one coming up of um, um, King um, yeah, Kim Jong Il. The, yeah, right. He did. He was alive. He's like, I approve this statue, right? And it was <laughs> him and it him was and in... riding around the car video going around right now. Right. It's pretty hilarious. Yeah, it was covered in gold. And wow. so when when the when the Chinese uh, came to visit, they they thought it was despicably ostentatious, and they were like, we need to get rid of this gold. So they took the gold <laughs> so off, actually, but the statue's still took there. The gold off. But they kept the statue, right? So yeah, this was this was definitely um, ostentatious pride done for a political purpose, right? To to remind the people who they're supposed to be worshiping, because it was in one Korea in particular. It looks a lot like worship, like public worship. Well, it like, looks like the Roman uh, the, the Roman imperial purgatory. statues, and those those right. figures were meant to be worshipped. Yes. Right. That's that's what I was thinking when I saw these. Right. There aren't a, there aren't a whole lot of them like that around the world. Right. Um, so, yeah, we have our Lincoln Memorial, which is <laughs> pretty physically imposing when you're standing underneath it. It's it's it. Well, we've discussed this before. It's a, it's Zeus. Oh, definitely. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but again, 70 years after he was he was gone, I I. Still don't think it belongs there. Yeah. Have a memorial. Just don't, don't put a statue of a man that looks like him in it. That's just too weird. Yeah, it looks like they were, they were trying to create a culture of of hero worship. Well, this is so we end with the the Shelley poem. Oh yeah. I I I I'm kind of me and my doll <laughs> are. <laughs> It's like to, this. Still, the dot, dot, dot. Because like, it's like the, I. It it feels it feels right and appropriate, even though we've talked through all of it at the layers and the mocking and the problems and the politics and stuff. It does feel right to be proud to be American. From the yeah, perspective of right. my Gen X. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I am. I am. Well, it's that. It's the reason I think we're we're struggling with this is because as Catholics, we're struggling with the word, word pride itself. What do we really mean? When you when you say pride, it's still the, the still the basic question because pride is a sin, right? So does it mean happiness in your accomplishments? Yeah, you can you can be you can be proud of that. You know, you know, some people might argue, well, I'm not proud of this. And say, well, I am. And it, you, there's a lot of things that have 
maybe nothing to do with war, mm. you know, that you can be proud of. Like blending of people into families, you know, was, was a good thing. I think the current administration's plan to, to let in all these military-aged fighting men, some of them with very bad backgrounds doing very bad things, I don't think they care. I think they're just opening the floodgates to change the demographic of the country. Um, that happened when all those it, Germans showed up. <laughs> and I bet a lot of them was that, were, you know, were here in Chicago, went and fought the Germans on the other side in, in right. the First they, World War. They, they weren't coming in by the millions, though. Oh, that they did. So they came, millions of them came <laughs> over in the 19th century. And one in one year? Well, okay, so there's more people in the world now. And so, yes, in absolute numbers, there's definitely more now. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was it, because it's 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 a, it's a shock to the system, right? I mean, it was a, it was a shock to the system of New York when the Irish flooded in after after the after the famine. Well, that's how and, that's how Margaret Sanger got her start because she was yeah. she was in New York and she was visiting those tenements and saying, "There's too many people here and they're miserable, so big families are a problem." Well, she also had a problem with Catholics. Her mother was a Catholic and she despised Catholicism. Oh well, that's the okay. Her, that. <laughs> yeah. The day her mother died, she left the Catholic school her mother made her go to and never went back again. We and clearly have we of... clearly have some layers of conversation to have here. We'll end with Shelley yeah. right now. I met a traveler <laughs> from an antique land who said, Two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert, near them on the sand, half sunk a shattered sh strat shattered visage lies whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command tell that its sculptor well those passions read, which yet survive stamped on these lifeless things, the hand that mocked them and the heart that fed, and on the pedestal these words appear. My name is Ozymandias, king of kings, look on my works, ye mighty, and despair. Nothing beside remains, round the decay of that colossal wreck, boundless and bare. The lone and level sands stretch far away. It's mm, wonderful. I think just because it, it mostly scans. <laughs> Wait, well, it <laughs> scans, but the image the image of the sand covering covering up somebody's past pride yes. is very is very instructive. We we were just it's, talking it's about poem. Shelley, and he did he wrote this Prometheus Unbound, which I think we need to study. Um, mm. the, the sort of the the pride. I mean, Prometheus Unbound is about pride going against Zeus's judgment to give fire mm -hmm. to humanity. Right. I'm not sure which side Shelley's on in terms of pride. <laughs> I haven't read it yet. Or maybe I haven't. I just don't remember. No, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's like a play. It's like a long poem play. Mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of as long as what we're writing. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, it sounds like what it's, we're writing. No, it sounds very much like form. what we're writing. It's like trying to dramatize the mm -hmm. challenge of humanity. Mm -hmm. Proud to be. Are you going to sing with me now? <laughs> no. no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> well, American Girl and I are sad that you wouldn't sing with us. Love my country. I'm not going to sing that song. <laughs> I'm not proud or tired. <laughs> Do you recognize that that quotation? So that was that, the, the, I'm not proud or tired. It's um, from Alice's no. Restaurant, right? It's uh, um, oh, Arlo Guthrie, no, his, his anti-war yeah. song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sitting yeah. on the group W bench <laughs> for littering. <laughs> 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 well, we are here on the Mosaic Arc, proud to be Americans and Gen X and Catholic. Absolutely. And not in that order. <laughs> Correct. Yes. Uh, to be continued. Yes, we have we have we have more pride to unpack next week. We, maybe we should talk about Prometheus Unbound. That would be interesting. The pride of mm. humanity. Good yeah. segue. Yeah. Good segue. We'll do we'll, we'll, Shelley. We'll carry on with Shelley next week, who was very pride and cheated on his wife to marry Mary Shelley, who wrote Frankenstein. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I love monsters. <laughs> subscribe, like, stay with us. Subscribe on Unauthorized. The, the subscription portal now works. You can give us money so we can pay our artists so you can get Act 2 of Draco Alchemicus. Yes. 
proud to be an American. No, I, <laughs> I, I can't get the tune. We're going to have to learn this. Good night.